Hi guys, this is Katie with another creepy pasta story. Uh, the title of this one is Children's Playground. Um, it's a pretty fun one, so just sit back and relax and we'll get started. I'd recently moved to a new town. This one was a much nicer, cleaner, and quieter town than the other one I had lived in before. It was not the sort of town you'd expect to have. You'd expect things would be wrong with it, but it seemed so perfect. There was a very big public park right in the center. It housed rows upon rows of swings, slides infested with snake-like tunnels that weaved in and, around, in and around the playground, providing a maze for children to lose themselves in their games. There was even a functioning merry-go-round, which seemed to always be slightly turning on its own, inviting the children to hitch a ride on its platform of, tw platform of twirls. I have to emphasize on the fact that it was a quiet, peaceful town, the kind of town where kids could leave the house on their own and take the short journey to the park. I had, I had been given strict instructions by my parents that I should come home the second it started turning dark. My life was wonderful, or so it had seemed at the time. It was a Friday. I knew that because I remember coming home with a large grin on my face as I knew I had the luxury of non-stop playing for the next two whole days. I did what I always did. I chucked my school bag on my bed and was ordered to change into our other clothing. In a matter of minutes, I was ready to descend into a world of fun. Nothing could stop me. The tunnels were my favorite. It was so easy to get lost in them, which made great fun for playing hide and seek with my only two friends, Billy and Tom. They were both in my class and, like many other eight-year-olds, we loved any game that filled us with pure adrenaline. We were going to play murder. I don't expect anyone to know this game. We made it up. The rules were very simple, to similar to hide and seek. Except when the ones seeking found you, they had to murder you, which was pretend, obviously. It was nearing winter as I remember being slightly cold as I warm wormed my way around in the tunnels, furiously trying to find a perfect hiding spot. Billy was the seeker, Tom had hidden behind the merry-go-round, and I was alone. It must have been maybe 10 to 15 minutes, which for an eight-year-old felt like an entire year, when I decided to to do what all the other kids did when they got bored and just give up. I give up, I shouted, my voice echoing through the tunnels. I'm in the tunnels, I give up. I heard sudden shuffling from one end of the tunnel. Now I don't know why, but I froze still. I didn't call out again, I just waited there. Something was not right. Billy would always say something before coming in, af before coming in after someone in the tunnel. He'd always congratulate them on being the last one to be found or for cheating by hiding in the endless maze of tunnels. As I stood frozen, the shuffling began to grow louder. I could tell it was starting to get dark outside as the tunnels slowly began to lose any light in them, slowly but surely dropping into the darkness. I began to slowly shuffle backwards. The shuffling ahead of me began to grow louder, as if someone, was com as if someone or something was coming was way too big for the tunnel, was trying to navigate around. Come out, it's time to go home now. A very creepy voice echoed through the tunnels. It sounded like when a grown man talks to small children, taking slightly a higher pitched tone. This was definitely wrong. I probably would have come out if the voice was at, had been outside, but it wasn't. It was coming from inside the tunnels. Why would an adult be inside of these tunnels? As I was shuffling further and further back, the face of an old man appeared in the darkness ahead of me. Patches of hair on his head and a definite look of somewhat, of someone who hadn't showered in the last week. I couldn't see what he was wearing, but I knew it was tattered old clothes. He had a sharp, scraggly, scraggly beard, which was prepped with dirt. The second we made eye contact, he just smiled at me, an eerie smile, revealing his filthy underbrush teeth, which had blotches of brown and black covering from them entirely. I panicked, turned around and began shuffling on all fours as fast as I could, the shuffling behind me growing louder and quicker as I went. He was chasing me. It was obvious at this point. I sped through the maze for what felt like an eternity. I only stopped when my legs refused to go any further. I had taken so many twists and turns that even I was completely lost. I don't want to hurt you. I just want to talk. I just want to play. The voice echoed through the tunnels. I could tell he was nearby. I pressed my body against the bottom of the small, narrow tunnel and listened. He continued to make soft cooing noises, begging me to come out and present myself to him. 
I lay in the tunnel for hours. No exaggeration. Even after I heard him curse to himself and angrily force his way out of the tunnel, I continued to wait just to be safe. Thoughts, thoughts raised my mind of me coming out of the tunnel only to be met by that same smile that had once greeted me. In the darkness of the tunnel, I could make out blue flashing lights on the side, on the outside. I heard frantic voices calling three names repeatedly, Billy, Tom, and Michael. When I heard my name, my heart slowly began to calm. My parents had come. I easily shuffled out of the tunnels, guided by the wet dirt scrapings along the walls of the tunnel, the way the man must have gone. Outside, I was greeted by several police cars with lights flashing. There were groups of adults with concerned looks on their faces. I recognized two of those adults. Mom, Dad, I wailed, crying as I ran towards them. They began crying and ran towards me, lifting me up off the ground and hugging me so tightly I felt like I was going to be slowly crushed. Billy and Tom were apparently taken that evening. They were later found hidden in a nearby skip, mutilated. They had been brutally massacred. Their skulls had been caved in with a large iron bar and their bodies had deep cuts all over them. Large pieces of glass were found, all buried in their backs. What chills me to the fucking bone, to this very day, is that the wet dirt I saw in the tunnels wasn't entirely just wet dirt. It was Billy and Tom's blood, which was later discovered. After slaughtering my two best friends and making eye contact with me in that tunnel, that old man had just smiled. He had just won the game of murder. Well, that was it. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel. Um, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.